Hello, my name is David Malin, and I'm the instructor for Computer Science E1, Understanding Computers and the Internet at Harvard University's Extension School. You're watching one of our videos of the week. For more such videos or information about this course, visit us on the web at computerscience1.org. Enjoy the show. Hello, my name is Ray Diaz, one of the TAs for Computer Science E1. Welcome to our video of the week on JavaScript. So what is JavaScript? Well, first of all, it's not Java, so don't confuse it with the other programming language, although the names seem quite similar. JavaScript and Java are two very different animals. JavaScript is an interpreted, object-oriented programming language used typically these days to enhance websites. It's executed by the user agent, more commonly known as the web browser, making it a client-side application. JavaScript is very useful for small or quick functions like form validation, setting cookies, uh, checking the date and time, and lots of other things. All of that functionality can be included using other server-side technology. It's just that JavaScript happens to be quick and easy to implement, and you don't have to have uh, access or configure uh, your web server in order to include it. JavaScript, like any other computing language, takes advantage of certain programming standards. And we'll describe the basics of a few of these for those of you who haven't been exposed to them. The first concept I want to talk to you about are variables. Variables are really important to computer programming because they allow us to make more flexible applications. Essentially, they're a storage place for information. You can use them to capture information, such as a user's login name on a website. You can use them to manipulate information, such as the account of the number of people who have visited your website, and so on and so forth. Think of them uh, like variables in algebra x equals 8. Similarly, in programming, you might have a variable date equals and then whatever today is. The next concept is a branch, or also called a conditional. This is essentially an if statement. If some condition is true, then execute some code. Here's an example. In this example, in this so-called pseudocode, we're testing the condition is today's section number 11. So if section is number 11, then today must be about JavaScript. Otherwise, what is our topic for today? Our next concept is that of a loop. A loop is a block of statements which executes if some condition is true. For example, if you wanted to prompt a user with some instructions while they were filling out a lengthy form, uh, you could uh, have some code that displayed an image or perhaps some instructions or some other kind of prompt while uh, the user's mouse pointer was hovered over, say, a question mark or a help link or something like that. And then as soon as the user's cursor moves off that question mark or help link, etc., then you stop displaying the prompt, the image, or the helpful text. The next concept is that of a function. A function is essentially just a named procedure that, perform, that does something. Here's an example of a function that will just pop up some predefined text. So let's get into some actual JavaScript. So what we have here is just a standard XHTML page. Uh, it's XHTML1 transitional. You can tell that from the DTD on the first three lines. And on lines 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 is the script. And what's going on here is that we have on line 9 a line that reads, var name equals prompt, please enter your name. And on line 10, document.write, title, welcome, name, and title. So what's going on here is in line 9, a prompt pop-up will display when the user navigates to this page and they'll be presented with a box that asks them to please enter your name and they'll have a blank line. 
following that document.write welcome name essentially writes into the XHTML document the required element title and the value uh, within the start and end tags of title is welcome and whatever name the user entered uh, from the prompt. So let's see this in action. As soon as I navigate to the page, the prompt pop-up window launches. If I type in my name and then either hit the enter key or click the OK button, then the script does its thing based on the variable name that I typed in to the prompt. We also see in the body of the page another set of script tags within the H1 tags or the heading. We should also write the name inputted for at the prompt. Well, that's a very basic introduction to JavaScript. It's meant to just give you a primer into the language and what you can do with it. If you'd like to learn more and go through a more robust tutorial, we highly recommend going to w3schools.com and clicking on the Learn JavaScript link on the left-hand side under Tutorials. It's a great way to get started, and it has lots and lots of sample code that you can play with. Thank you for watching our video of the week.